Teardown has been released today. It's still in early access, so you can expect it to change as time goes on, but right now it's already a playable, nicely polished and relatively bug-free experience. Link to the Steam page is in the description. Not that I'm psychic, but when you first load this game up, all you'll want to do is to break stuff. Lots of stuff. You'll have hours of fun doing that. The best way to do that would be the sandbox mode, but you won't have access to all of the maps and tools straight away. These are tied to your progress through the campaign, so it's worth playing a few of the early missions, which also serve as tutorials. And yes, a lot of these involve blowing stuff up too. I've played the campaign for about 3 hours, have beaten about 15 missions, and from that I've already unlocked almost every weapon and all 4 maps, ready to be played in sandbox mode. What's great about that mode is that you have unlimited ammunition for everything. I got to play this game before release, and back then, while it still gave me a lot of ammo, it wasn't unlimited, so in the back of my mind I was always concerned that I wouldn't have enough ammunition to finish blowing up whatever I was trying to destroy, so that's no longer a problem. And if you die in sandbox mode, you'll respawn with the existing damage still in place, so don't worry about losing all of that. There's also a create mode. That's right, you can make your own levels for Teardown already, but right now support is limited. You can import static scenes from the Magica Voxel editing program, but there are plans for Teardown to get its own level editor in the future at some point, which will let you make better, more interactive stuff. It isn't a feature I've looked at just yet, but there is a guide on how to do it and what not to do in it over on the Teardown site. I'll link to that in this video's description as well. So the campaign mode, what can you expect from this? Well it's a lot more story driven than I expected. You have a home hub that you return to after every mission, and over time it changes as you slowly build a beautiful home of your own. It's a really nice little touch actually, but you'll miss it if you choose to jump straight into the next mission every time. You play as a guy, who I've decided to call Darius, whose job is to destroy stuff. One thing leads to another and he starts down a vicious circle of destroying and stealing more stuff in order to make up for the damages he's already caused. There are a number of recurring characters who give you missions and you get to see their stories progress over time too. There's some dark humour going on here, with you as the middleman that nobody seems to suspect. I really want to stress how fun and silly some of these missions are. Of course there are the one minute missions where you have to carve an optimised path through the level between objectives, but there are also other sorts sprinkled about where you're just meant to break stuff and some that are so mad that it would be a crime to reveal them here. And before each objective starts, there's always time to explore and to simply appreciate the atmospheric environments that you find yourself in. There's also a kind of RPG progression aspect to the game. You unlock new items by completing missions and optional objectives, and can upgrade those items using money that you make by stealing stuff from the levels. I actually found the stealing aspect to be a lot of fun, I was a bit disappointed to discover that once something's been stolen, it remains stolen forever. It means the second time you visit a level there's not much to find in it anymore. I guess what I wanted was to be able to grind away at certain levels to farm enough money to upgrade all of my equipment. Maybe things change later on in the campaign, but I kind of wish that there were just a few randomly spawning valuables every time you load the level which you get to keep if you beat the missions for it, meaning that if you invest enough time into the game you'll end up with fully upgraded weapons. As an example of the upgrades, with the shotgun you can increase how much ammo you have for it, you can up its range, and you can up the amount of damage it deals. I'm not far enough through the campaign to get a good grasp of how much you'll be able to unlock in total, but it does let you give some love to the tools that you find yourself using the most. You might be happy to know that it's quite easy to beat a mission. It's a lot harder to beat it though with all of the optional secondary objectives as well, and I didn't feel like I was rewarded much for doing that. I guess it lets you unlock more tools sooner, but I enjoyed upgrading my stuff so much I was hoping I'd be financially rewarded for beating those optional objectives as well, but that wasn't the case. You can replay the missions whenever you like, so there's no harm in rushing through the campaign in order to unlock stuff for sandbox mode as quickly as you can. I got to play this game before release, and I've noticed a few improvements in this current version. There are more sound effects for items like straw and metal. The music in general is more upbeat and happy. I got a lot of comments from people asking why the music sounded so depressing before, so I guess this is something that was changed intentionally. The flashlight looks nicer now, but one thing I don't like is how much your head tilts as you're changing the direction in which you're running. It almost feels like you're on a ship, or that the ground beneath your feet is tilting, so I hope an option will be added to tone this effect down or to disable it completely. But all in all, the movement in this game is very forgiving. You can make tough, precise jumps with ease, and it all feels very responsive, despite the challenging nature of a fully destructible environment. I encountered a strange jerky camera when driving vehicles though, I'm hoping this will be fixed sooner rather than later as it does make the experience quite infuriating. One big issue remains in this current build, 
Thanks to my unlimited ammunition in the sandbox mode, I was able to confirm that sometimes buildings still don't fall down even when fully broken off from the ground. It only happens sometimes, and if it does then you'll need to shoot the structures like this pylon a few more times to kick it into action. Sometimes big buildings will collapse as intended, like this whole tower just here. And this lighthouse here will collapse without issue too, and it's great fun to be inside it when that happens. So here's hoping that as teardown progresses through early access, stuff like this is gradually ironed out. Even in this first release, the campaign mode is already a lot of fun, more fun and varied than I had expected it to be. And although there are just four different levels, the weather, time of day and objectives change enough that the different missions all feel different from each other, and in a way being able to familiarise yourself with these layouts becomes part of the fun. All in all, teardown is a lot of fun, and thank you to Dennis for providing me with early access. If you're worried that your computer won't be able to run it, check out this video of it here where I test it out on all sorts of slower hardware. 